Hi, I'm Donald Robertson and I'm here today to talk about how to think like a Roman emperor, the Stoic philosophy of Marcus Aurelius. I'm in the museum at Carnuntum in Austria uh, and this is where Marcus wrote the meditations or at least part of it. You can see a, a map behind me of the ancient Roman city of Carnuntum in the military camp where Marcus stationed himself during the Marcomannic Wars. And I'm going to talk about some of the chapters in the book uh, I'm going to do separate videos for each of them. Uh, I'm going to pick out chapters that deal with specific problems. So dealing with desires and habits, dealing with anger management, dealing with pain and illness and coping with worry and anxiety. And the first one is chapter four in the book. It's called The Choice of Hercules and it has to do with dealing with desire and overcoming bad habits. So what I'd like to do is really, rather than giving an overview of the contents, just kind of focus in on some of the key practical ideas that we derive from CBT and that we can relate to Marcus's writings and to Stoicism in general. So I want to give some practical hints and tips basically and get really right to the kind of core of the issue. So when people want to deal with bad habits, actually there's a behavior therapy technique that's been around since the 1970s called habit reversal, which is known to be a particularly robust method for coping with simple habits. Um, and I believe it can be adapted to be used in quite a broad manner for quite a variety, quite a broad variety of different issues. And habit reversal is a technique that clients have been shown to be able to use on their own without necessarily having a lot of help from a therapist. It works in a short space of time and it's very, very simple. And research has been carried out on it showing its effectiveness since the 1970s. It was first developed by two behavior therapists called Azrin and Nunn. And I'm gonna relate it to some of the concepts that Marcus talks about and that other Stoics talk about, such as Epictetus. So when we want to um, overcome a bad habit, like the first thing that we have to do is identify whether something actually is a bad habit or not and whether we want to deal with it. And the way that we'd normally do that in therapy is to identify a habit and then think through very carefully the consequences of indulging in it. So it could be smoking cigarettes, it could be snacking on junk food, it could be fingernail biting, or it could even be uh, ha having certain thoughts. It could be engaging in uh, social media, uh, any number of things. Could be watching too much television, anything really that you want to change. And this technique work, works better for some habits than others, but uh, that's something that you'll have to kind of judge yourself. Uh, but generally speaking, it's a, it's a pretty broadly effective strategy. So the first thing to do is to think about the consequences of the habit. And usually, not just in the short term, but particularly the longer term consequences of engaging in whatever the habit is that you're considering uh, evaluating and changing. And the Stoics sometimes do that by imagining uh, two options, a kind of dichotomy. So what would happen if you keep indulging in the habit a day, a week, a month, a year from now, versus what would happen if you manage to break the habit? And one of the things you should consider is that if you do successfully break a habit, you're probably gonna become more confident in general and you're probably gonna feel more able to deal with other habits. So the improvement you experience will normally generalize to some extent. That's something that you should factor in when you're thinking about the consequences of changing or breaking any habit. So you can think of it as a simple fork in the road. And the implication of that is that the difference is gonna get further and further and further apart as time goes on. And thinking about it in that way should mean that your motivation gets stronger the more you think about the longer term consequences and the more you think about the contrast of indulging in the habit versus breaking the habit. And so sometimes people will say if they want to quit smoking or something, look I already know what the consequences are of smoking cigarettes, but actually clinical experience and even research in this area shows that people tend to massively overestimate how well they know the consequences of engaging in bad habits. So when I speak to people about the consequences of smoking, every smoker will say that they already know it's bad for them. But when I question them about it in detail, about the specific health problems that are related to smoking, the ways in which it affects their body, usually they, they know very, very little. Um, but that only comes out when we properly question people. 
So thinking more carefully and more thoroughly about the consequences of a habit is important. And also so it's not just an intellectual exercise, actually trying to visualize things, because it's when we take time to visualize the consequences of our action that it, it really has a, an effect on our emotions and on our behavior and on our motivation. So that's the first step. And we kind of find this as a recurring theme in the Stoics. They ask us to think about the consequences of our actions. Marcus refers this to, uh, to this a number of times. And it's also what's meant by the title of the chapter, The Choice of Hercules. Um, you'll see that when you read the book. It's a famous allegory that was uh, part of a speech by a, a sophist called Prodicus. Um, and then the next thing that we need to do when we're changing a habit is become very aware of what therapists sometimes call the early warning signs of the behavior. And the point here is to spot things that you haven't already noticed. So for example, um, many habits that people come to therapy to break are known as hand to face habits. So that could be eating a food, could be drinking something, could be smoking a cigarette, could be biting your fingernails, could be um, hair pulling, skin picking. So a lot of habits fall into this hand to face category. And when people engage in hand to face habits, they often fidget, first of all, or they stroke their face or put their hand close to their mouth. And just kind of noticing these precursors of the habit and maybe also other things that you're doing. Um, so people are seldom aware of their facial expression or what they're doing with their eyes, whether they're frowning or not, if they're tensing their shoulders, um, how they're moving their hands specifically. And that's easy to do in therapy because the therapist can just kind of interrogate the client and say, well, look, when you pick a cigarette up, what's your facial expression like? Where are you looking with your eyes? What are you doing with your other hand? And usually people say, I don't know, I don't know. Like, but when these questions are posed, it encourages us to become more self-conscious. And self-consciousness tends to inhibit the automaticity of habits. It makes habits feel more awkward. So that would be really annoying if you were giving a speech or um, playing a sport. It could inhibit what should be a fluid performance. But it's useful if you want to break a bad habit and make it feel less automatic and purpose. But that takes time and effort. You need to question yourself very deeply and reflect very deeply from a number of different perspectives on what the subtle precursors of a habit might be so that you notice things that you hadn't previously noted. That in itself can be sufficient for many people to break a habit. Um, or it could be the beginning of a more multi-component treatment approach, right? Or self-help approach. But both of these stages actually, building motivation sometimes is all that people need to do. Uh, heightening self-awareness, awareness training, sometimes could be enough for certain people. And then the other thing um, that we, we often do in habit reversal is when you notice the habit beginning, you engage in a substitute behavior. For hand-to-face habits, the, most, the simplest and most common strategy is just to clench your fist very tightly. And there's some research that suggests that holding that for two or three minutes is more effective than just doing it for a minute or less. And that actually feels like a very long time, although it might not sound like it. Um, it's kind of almost a form of aversion therapy, but you're not punishing yourself. I mean, you know, it's not like you're giving yourself an electric shock, you're just doing something that's slightly tedious. But the fact that you're doing something that's a bit annoying or a bit tedious is actually a very powerful way of inhibiting the habit and preventing it from recurring in the future. And also there's some research that shows that even if you forget to do this, and then maybe an hour later, you realize, oh, I guess I bit my fingernails. But even after that delay, you still engage in the substitute behavior that can be uh, effective. So even if you don't catch yourself as early as you would have liked, it still can be beneficial to use the substitute behavior. You can come up with other behaviors as long as you're doing something that's incompatible with engaging in the habit or that diverts you from it or replaces it. But clenching your fist is something that most people find convenient. Um, even in public, you could do it in your pocket or whatever, and other people wouldn't notice that you're doing it. So it's not too intrusive, but it, it can be combined with uh, kind of focusing attention, divert you from the normal pattern of behavior that you engage in. So those are some very simple techniques for habit reversal that you might want to try out if you're learning about stoicism and you want to break out of bad habits. 
we know that this is a, an effective way of doing it. So there's more about that in the book. It goes into it in, in a lot more detail, but I just wanted to give you a very quick practical summary and get right to the gist of some techniques that you might not already know about. Hopefully you'll find that beneficial and uh, you know, let me know how you get on with it, experimenting with those techniques.